where we have the SQA National 5 Maths specimen paper and model papers. I'm going to go through model paper 1, calculator section, only questions 9 up to 13, sorry, uh, 1 to 9, questions 10 to 13 will be in a, a different video. Strongly recommend you get the book, it's by Hodder and Gibson, it's got four, four practice papers in, all at National 5 level. So number one, number one is a standard percentage increase question. Gives a price for an item, six hundred pound. Increases in value at four and a half percent per year for three years. You're asked to find out the value at the end of three years. So originally it's worth a hundred percent of its value. That goes up by four and a half percent. So that would be one hundred four point five percent. Uh, percent is out of 100, so I'm divide this by 100 to, and we'll get 1.045. So to find the price after one year, we'd multiply by 1.045. Find out what that is. For a second year, multiply by 1.045 again. Find out what the price is after year two. Then take that price after year two, multiply by 1.045 again to get the price at the end of year three. So essentially what we have done well, what we're going to do is multiply by 1.045 three times, or 1.045 cubed, multiplied by the original amount, which comes out as £684.70 pence to the nearest penny. So find out the, we could call this the multiplier, it's three years, we're going to cube it, and multiply by the original amount. Question number two. Is a standard deviation question. We are given seven values. We are asked to find the mean and the standard deviation. So the mean is the sum of the values. Add all the values up, divided by how many numbers we've got. So 13 add 7 add nothing, add 9 add 7, plus 8 plus 5. It's 49 divided by 7 is 7. Then we need to work out the standard deviation. To do that, we need a couple of values, and we're going to substitute into here. So we need the sum of x squared and also the sum of x. So the sum of x we've already done in the first part, that came to 49. Sum of x squared is the values squared all added together. 13 squared at 7 squared at 0 squared at 9 squared at 7 squared, etc. Just let the calculator do it, that's 437. Then we need to substitute these two values into the formula. So let's look at the formula. So we have the square root of absolutely everything. We have the sum of x squared here, that's 437. Subtract the sum of x, 49 squared, so that's going to be minus 49 squared over n, n is how many numbers we have, we have 7 numbers, all of that divided by n minus 1, all of that divided by 7 minus 1 in this case. So there we are, 437 subtract 49 squared divided by 7, all over 6. So if we're going step by step, work out what's on the top, that would be 94, still got to divide by 6, still got a square root. Uh, if you have a Casio calculator here, great, because you can put fractions on and a square root around it, you will not make a mistake. Other types of calculator, you might make a silly mistake, so make sure we can do this properly. Some calculators you need to do square root, then in a bracket, 94 divided by 6. And it should come out with 3.96. Right, there is a part B to this question, which asks us to interpret those results. We had a a mean of 7 and a standard deviation of 3.96. So it goes on to say the following season, the team, it's about a rugby team, appoints a new coach. A similar series of matches produces a mean of 27 and a standard deviation of 3.25. So the mean has increased from 7 to 27. So it's gone up. So the average number of points per game has increased. So the team scores more points. That should probably be per game. As the mean is higher. 
and we're also going to compare the standard deviation. It is now lower. That means the values are less spread out. Or we could say the values are more consistent. So the amount of points scored are less spread out, i.e. they are more consistent.